If tube microphones are so great, why don't we have tube loudspeakers? There we have some vacuum tubes. They've been around for about a century now, and you would think that under normal circumstances they would have become old-fashioned and extinct by now, but no, we still like them. If I think back to the 1970s, really everyone thought then that transistors were going to take over completely for just about every application imaginable. And sure enough, some manufacturers did build guitar amplifiers uh, with uh, transistors and no tubes at all. Uh, HH was a, a notable UK manufacturer and I had one of their amplifiers and I'm going to say that it seemed impressive at first and it would go very loud but ultimately the, the sound just wasn't there, it didn't have the tone that I wanted and uh, when I changed over to um, a Fender Twin Reverb it was I was much more satisfied with uh, with that. So I think uh, guitarists were the people who recognised that uh, vacuum tubes still had value and should still be used uh, because of the special sound that they do have. And at the same time, uh, we have microphones, so uh, a capacitor microphone needs to have an internal amplifier to work. And going back into history, we have microphones like the Neumann U47, which is probably the most famous of the vacuum tube microphones. And uh, Neumann superseded it with the U47 FET, field effect transistor. So they stopped using the valve, the vacuum tube. I shall, I shall have to decide what I'm going to call it. Oh, I'll just call it anything, tube. Um, they decided to stop using the vacuum tube and substitute it with a field effect transistor as the amplifier. And it is still a good mic. I've used the uh, Neumann U47 FET quite a lot in the past. And it's a good mic, but it's not really a proper U47, I don't think, because that does need the tube. But then we had some more progress because um, we had the Neumann U67, which was a, a vacuum tube mic, and it looks very, very similar to the U87, which followed. So Neumann discontinued the 67 and replaced it with the U87, once again with the transistor amplifier. So clearly this was the way that progress was going. But along the line somewhere, people started to realise that transistors are not such a, a good thing as they made out to be. Yes, they've got loads of useful applications. Imagine if, you're <laughs> imagine if your phone was full of vacuum tubes how, instead of transistors. How big would it be then? Uh, answers in the comments, please. <laughs> but microphones, at some stage, somebody realised, hang on a minute, we're building all these um, uh, transistor microphones, but they don't seem to have the same sound as the old mics. And no, they don't. So the vacuum tube microphone still has a wonderful place in uh, the in the studio. Uh, so a, a transistor microphone might be technically more accurate, but the tube microphone just sounds warmer and more pleasant because of the distortion that it uh, creates. So distortion on one hand can be a bad thing, but in a microphone it does sound good. It's got a certain sound characteristic that we like. So somebody asked me, I can't remember who it was, it might have been a, an audio masterclass student, if tube microphones are so great, why don't we have tube loudspeakers? Well, <laughs> it might sound like a silly question at first, but when you look into it, it's not so silly at all. Firstly, there's never going to be a tube loudspeaker as such because the loudspeaker is a purely passive device, so it uh, doesn't have any tubes or transistors in it. Um, it needs the amplifier to drive it, so that's where the tubes or transistors might be. And that amplifier, it can be inside the cabinet of the loudspeaker, which would make an active loudspeaker, which would make it an active loudspeaker. Let's get it right. Which would make it an active loudspeaker. But it's the amplifier where the tubes would be. So it does raise the question, where are these tube power amplifiers? Uh, because I can see none in the Pro Audio catalog. Let's look at <laughs> let's look at the Pro Audio catalog. Actually, what shall we look at? We will look at uh, Zounds. I think it's meant to be uh, pronounced. So we'll just see how many um, tube power amplifiers they have. So, oh, heaven's sake, tube power amplifier. So there we go. And we click on search. And we see. Well, we've got some results there, but we're not seeing anything like, um, there's, there's no studio power amplifier which uh, has tubes. So if we just put power amplifier, let's see what we get. 
Uh, there we go. We've got one uh, there. Uh, and we've got one there. That's a guitar amplifier. It's getting a bit mixed up there. That's another one there. There's another one there. So we've got loads of power amplifiers, but they're all transistor. There's no tube power amplifier available. Is there such a thing as a tube power amplifier? Well, yes, there is. Here's one that I researched earlier. So it's the one that came at the top of the search results. So uh, there's not, nothing particularly special about this amplifier, I don't think. But what we can see if we click on the image is we can see this isn't just a power amplifier. It is an integrated amplifier. So it's got the preamp for the CD. Oh, I didn't want that. <laughs> but don't they look nice? Don't they look nice? Pity they're, pity they're not glowing a little bit, but uh, yeah, I won't click it again because it'll just change. So we've got the preamplifier for the CD, the auxiliary, or the tuner. Uh, shame it hasn't got a record player input, but um, there you go. I'm sure you can get a tube one of those if you want. So we are, we are getting these tube power amplifiers, but in the hi-fi market, not the pro audio market. What can we see from this? Um, something we can certainly see here is the price tag. 1,249 Great British Pounds. And that's on clearance. <laughs> so what the regular, no, oh, heaven's sake. What the regular price is, I, can, I can't imagine. Uh, so what we can see is that it's uh, an extremely expensive amplifier. And um, maybe, oh, I can just, uh, maybe it's those transformers in the back. Maybe they're adding up the price. The tubes themselves are not very costly items. I think there's either there's a lot of marketing to be paid for or there's a lot of profit in this little gadget here. <laughs> Maybe that's a business I should uh, go into. So that's one thing we can see is it's extremely expensive. The other thing we can see is uh, the power per channel, power per channel into 8 ohms. That's the impedance of the loudspeaker. I I'm not going to go into that today. It says 30 watts. Um, it's not much good just saying 30 watts and leaving leaving it at that because that can have different meanings, but um, it does expand on it down here. So it's got 30 watts, uh, should be a, a capital W, the abbreviation for watts, <laughs> come on. 30 watts RMS, root, root mean square, per channel, ultra linear. I haven't got a clue what ultra linear means. Perhaps it means low distortion, I don't know, but it's a tube amplifier, you want the distortion. <coughs> um, but 30 watts RMS per channel. Um, we know what the watt is. It's it's the uh, unit of power. It's one joule per second. Or you could say the, the rate of energy transfer. Power is the same as the rate of energy transfer. RMS means root mean square. And it's a way of averaging out the true strength of the signal. And uh, my old physics teacher used to say it was the, the true heating value of the waveform. So if you connected this amplifier to um, uh, an electric radiator, you would get 60 watts of heat out of it. There are two channels, 60 watts of heat, and that'd be nice and warm to warm your hands on on a cold winter's evening. 30 watts of power is not a lot. A decent amplifier, you'd be thinking, 100 watts. Well, 100 watts would be fine for these most studio applications. It's not so much in terms of the loudness that you're thinking of, although watts are, of course, uh, linked to loudness. It's more in the peak signals that the amplifier can handle. That's where more power gives you more peak. So if you've got a low powered amplifier, what, what will happen is you'll, you, you might end up driving it hard and you'll be clipping the peaks of the waveform. So it's like if you set the preamp gain too high when you make a recording and you see the red light come on at the top of the meter, that means you've clipped your recording and that creates distortion, which is bad. Likewise, when you're mixing, if you see the red light come on at the meters at the top of the master channel, means you've clipped your output file and that means distortion, which is bad. So clipping in the power amplifier means distortion, which is bad. You might say that, well, it's not actually in the recording chain, so it doesn't affect the recording at all, but it affects the way you hear the audio. So if you're listening to clipped audio, it'll sound a bit brighter than it normally would. And that might incline you to just dial down the brightness in your recording. So you're compensating for something that only you can hear. So to the rest of your listeners, you're going to end up with a dull recording. So I think that is where the issue is going to be um, in the, the clipping. Well, let's just go back to uh, the article. Let's just see what I've got. So the pro, the pro, yes, 
The good thing about this amplifier, it's going to give you a warmer sound if that's the kind of thing that you like. And I think there is a rationale to say that if you enjoy the sounds that you're listening to while you're recording, you'll make better music. And I really do believe that. I, th I, I think that for, from an engineer's point of view, you'd like to have accurate sounds so that you can make precise judgments on what you're hearing. So your equipment is telling you the truth about what your recording sounds like. But as a musician, you just want it to, you, get, you want to get a vibe going. And if the vibe is working, you feel good about it. And you play better or you sing better. So I think that's a real thing. I really do believe that's a real thing. So I think um, the, the pro of the, the tube amplifier in recording would be that it has the potential just to sound good and make people feel good, that they're making really good sounds. And we'll just leave it to the mix engineer later to sort it all out if there's any problems. Um, and the con, however, is that the sounds in, you make in your studio would sound lovely and warm to you. They won't sound warm to anyone else who doesn't have the tubes in their listening system. So I'm going to say that this is a great, big, glaring hole. It's as big a hole as the Delabol slate quarry in Cornwall. <laughs> uh, it's a big hole in the pro audio market. A tube power amplifiers, it could be a, a real thing. I, I'd hope that people wouldn't start believing that they're actually better because they're not better than transistor power amplifiers. They're just different. It would have a different kind of sound for a different kind of application. So um, there we have it. If tube microphones are so great, why don't we have tube loudspeakers? I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.